Good morning, everyone. So excited to have everyone join us this morning. So just to review our learning objectives, we will talk about the value of the reference model in organizing an audit to help you be just more efficient in identifying your GCP non-compliances. We'll talk about strategies for conducting an audit of the ETMF that really allow you to leverage the capabilities of our ETMF system today, right? When we were doing paper audits, so, so challenging, so time consuming, but there's really awesome things that we can do today to leverage that functionality that our ETMFs provide. And then we'll talk about so using your strategies for your audit that really focus on the types of documents that give a big impact on the quality and GCP compliance of the TMF. We've got some documents that I always like to look at in an audit because it not only speaks to the TMF, but it speaks to the overall GCP compliance of the TMF itself and the study. A little bit about me. I've been around a pretty long time. I spent 15 years in big pharma, but during that time I ran a phase one site for pharma. So I kind of spent 15 years in site and sponsor side of the business. And then the last 15 plus years as an industry consultant. I do a lot of compliance work. I have been in more inspections than I care to admit to. And I'm a member of the TMF Reference Model Steering Committee. I have been around longer than Part 11, in case you do the math. And I remember when Part 11 was implemented and we were using an e-source system at the time that we had to go back and validate. So while I don't put myself out there as a validation expert, I have more than my fair share of pain and experience with Part 11. So let's just start with a definition of the TMF. So the TMF should be a standalone set of documentation. That means that your TMF can go in front of this inspector and speak to the study. It really shouldn't require a lot of explanation from the sponsor or the site staff. Now, I, I call this out, the, I want to just mention the site staff point. EMA views the TMF as the collection of content that the sponsor holds and the site holds. And so that's the reason why the site staff is, count, is included in this definition. I always like to say the TMF is the story of your study, the good, the bad, and the ugly, right? Because we know that there's never the perfect study. In fact, I would argue as an auditor, if I found the perfect study, I'd be very suspicious because where there's human, there's error. And what the TMF does is it tells the story about where those errors happen and how you as the sponsor or the CRO or even the site responded to those errors, right? So your TMF is kind of that story of your study. It's that documentation that allows the inspector to evaluate the conduct of the trial, the integrity of the data within the trial, and the compliance of the trial with GCP, because after all, that really is why we had inspections, right? The inspectors come to say, can we believe the data that was submitted? Did the study follow GCP? And did they follow the protocol as they, as they wrote it, right? Like, does the data reflect the situation that the protocol describes? So, Essentially, that TMF is a collection of output from all your functional areas. So every single functional area that's involved in a trial has some level of contribution to the TMF. So now, having said that, with a show of hands, let's really give me a green check. If you are involved in contributing content to the TMF, green check if you contribute content to the TMF. Okay, some of you, but not all of you. Okay, so now give me a, a red X if you're an auditor. Okay, so we have a lot of people that aren't auditors and don't contribute content to the TMF. So then I'm going to ask the same question at the end of the study and see how many of you still think you don't contribute content to the TMF. All right, so let's talk about current regulatory requirements because regulatory requirements are what drive our audits, right? As an auditor, right, so I'm not talking about the completeness of the TMF. I'm talking about an audit of the TMF. And so an audit is about the process that supports the activity, right? So QC completeness, like that's, that's like records that's data-driven. 
where an audit is really process driven. It's do we have the right processes in place to actually do have good quality TMS? And so the first place to start is to say, well, do I actually have a content list? Like, do I know what actually goes into my TMS? Some people call it a TMS map template. They call it an index template. But it's all of the different types of content that support the study. So we need that as a starting point for an inspector. We also need a comprehensive TMS management strategy. How do we as a company manage our TMS during and after the study? And that includes our long-term archival as well. And then our regulators expect our TMF to be inspection ready at all times. So that is called out by the European regulators, and we are now hearing that, that rumbling from the FDA.